So this video is actually from a comment I got in my previous video about transitioning in cybersecurity, where I talk about my six months as a cybersecurity engineer at Amazon. The video is gonna be somewhere on the screen or in the description, so check it out. But this comment is from Danny FOF or Danny Fuff. It says, hey man, I really appreciate the part about not being afraid to make the jump and not be scared to leave what could be considered a comfort zone. Would love a video about how to handle the first 90 days at a new role and how to be productive. This is a great question because I've gone through uh, various like, you know, first 90 days. Um, and I think it's evolved for me over that period of time. So I've been through my first 90 days as an intern, which is basically like half of my internship. Um, I've been through the first 90 days at my first full-time role at, at a SOC, which I left very shortly afterwards. Been, in, been through the first 90 days at um, my threat analyst role at Optiv, and then also first 90 days as well, when I got promoted at Optiv, started working on a new client, and then my first 90 days, I did a dog, and then my first 90 days, now at Amazon. So definitely been through a lot of first 90 days. So I can give you a lot of good, um, good advice on that. First things first, like get to know people. Honestly, that's the biggest thing. Get to meet people on your team. Like, meet your, meet, meet your manager, meet with your skip if possible. Um, possibly you could even meet with your manager's manager. I think some orgs like are that good where you, like, you can meet like all the way to like the head of your org. And I think that's pretty good. Just get to know those people. Uh, kind of like know like what what is their, like get to meet them, introduce yourself. You probably might have met them to the interview, but it's good to meet again after you've gotten into the role where they can tell you, you know, a lot more about like you know, the job without, you know, any confidentiality issue. So definitely like meet with those people, like set up like 30 minutes one-on-one or something and just like talk to them, ask them questions like about like their experience at the company so far, what has helped them succeed at the company. Um, also ask them about like, if you're talking to a leader, like a manager, like a director, or senior manager, or skip, or whatever, team lead, ask them about like what their goal or vision for the team is or the org is. They will, they will certainly like love that question and that will help you orient on like what you need to be doing with regards to like your work to help them achieve those goals. Typically, like your organizational goals or your team goals are typically going to be matched with why you were hired in the first place. So they hire you to solve a problem, but sometimes the problem is pretty ambiguous. So it's up to you to kind of like ask, you know, follow up questions like, you know, to the leader, like, hey, like, you know, what's your what's your goal for XYZ project? What's your goal for this, that, and the third? Um, or maybe maybe like after a couple of days, you noticed XYZ, like, you know, what are you trying to achieve with that? Like, ask them questions that will tell that help you, that will help them tell you what exactly they're looking for with regards to, you know, what you should be doing in the role. That's the first thing I recommend. The other thing I recommend is setting up meetings, one-on-ones with your teammates. So set up meetings with like people you're gonna be working with, people that you're gonna be seeing on a day-to-day -day basis, like people that you work on your team, like the direct reports to your manager, or even your greater team, that helps you to kind of understand like how things work there, right? You get to meet people who become like your, you know, your allies, your mentors maybe, even like, you know, coworkers that can always support you if there's anything you need, like, it just helps with building relationships, right? Um, getting that first meeting, like I think you don't wanna like, go like three, four or five months down the line and then you realize, oh thing, like I have this teammate that I've never even met. Like you don't want that to happen. So maybe with people, just talk with them, just introduce yourself, like share your story. And as I've, I, I typically have like a list of questions I ask. I first start with like introductions where they tell me about themselves, like their backgrounds, like, you know, how they got to where they are. And also share a bit about, about myself as well, how I got to Amazon or how I got to whatever company. Then I go into questions about like their team, what they do, how I work with their team, like what the scope of work is. Um, and some people like from the first meeting, like you can always already tell that maybe they have a liking to you or like, you know, they love, you know, they just warm towards you. Certain people like that you want to set up like recurring meetings with maybe like once every three months, once every six months, because they will help you navigate challenges at the company, maybe give you advice on like how to grow, how to navigate teams. Like that is going to be really huge for you because you need, you need someone who is already inside to kind of like help you orient on how things work here, right? Especially when you work at a pretty large company, it really, really helps. So meet with people. That's the biggest thing. Like just talk with them, like just get to know them. Like it's, it's, it's always going to be helpful. First thing. So meet with people, meet with as many people as you can, like as many as you can, like don't overbook yourself, but meet with as many people as you possibly can. It will help you a lot. I can't emphasize that a lot. 
I think the other thing you can do is like look into like your SOPs, your run books, your documentation. That is going to be super helpful. Like you want to like digest those run books, those SOPs, bookmark them. I typically use like a bookmark structure with folders that has like different, you know, details with wikis and SOPs and job aids. So essentially like that helps you to kind of identify resources quickly. So if you, you know, need to like work on something, you can easily look in your bookmark folder, find the job aid or wiki or like the SOP that has the details you're looking for and easily have access to that. So go through all the wikis and everything. Typically you have an onboarding plan that will kind of guide you through that. But if you don't, ask questions about the wiki, like, hey, where's where are the wikis, where are the job aids? Like, I need this to like, you know, just kind of understand like what the scope of work looks like. So definitely go through that. Hey there. Did you know that 70% of our YouTube viewers aren't subscribed? If you're part of the group, please consider hitting that subscribe button. We're aiming to reach 50,000 subscribers by the year's end and your support will mean a whole lot. Thank you so much for your help with this. And now let's get back to the video. I also wanted to quickly add that you should also be trying to get familiar with the tools and the code base. So that's really, really important, especially if you're an engineering org, like getting familiar with the tools they use is going to be important, whether it's like, you know, your SIM tools your EDR tools, like, uh, you know, your case management tools, like getting familiar with those tools, like learn how they work and just being good with them is going to be super important. Just you want to make sure that you can kind of like learn about them. Like if you need to like maybe like do some video, you know, YouTube videos or read some documentation to get familiar with those tools will be important to maybe shadow some people to kind of like understand how the tool is used at a company it's gonna be super important the code base gonna make sure like you kind of understand like the repo you're gonna be working in kind of maybe like typically companies like would have like a setup script that would help you like kind of like configure all of your access and all of that stuff so that should have you set up but want to make sure like you go into the code base like or into the repo looking at the different folders directory looking at people's previous commits into the code base like or, or, or the repository seeing like you know how people are committing code into the repository like you know what kind of code they're committing like if it's like a detection repository you want to look at like you know like the you know, previous commits into the, into the repository look at comments as well like just kind of orient around like how you know code is being pushed in the organization especially if it's like detection or if it's response like your playbooks kind of like getting familiar with like the code in the playbook books how people are writing how people are writing playbooks like if they're using tag in um maybe like the the scripts that you know do pre-commit hooks like look at those scripts like you know whether it's like in your local repository or like github actions or like in um uh, gitlab like those tools like get familiar with them get familiar with the code base uh, get familiar with like how code is written or pushed in that you know organization um that really helps you a lot especially if you want to like make your first you know you know uh commit to the repository whether it's like detection or whether it's like response um whether you're using soar or uh you're using like you know whatever platform so just kind of get familiar with like the tools you're using you know that's super important like you got to be using those tools for your time there so if you need to shadow somebody or read some documentation watch some videos do that to get familiar with those tools and then also Make sure to get familiar with the code base or the repository, uh, especially if you're going to be pushing code to production. Um, typically, some companies will have like a staging environment where you have to like test out stuff like that. So just, yeah, try to make sure you, you, you're able to like do all of that stuff, like, um, you know, very confidently or reach out to people to see if you can shadow them um, so you can kind of, you know, figure out how that is done there. Um, and yeah, that's super, super important. Next thing is ask questions. Ask a lot of questions. Honestly, your first 90 days is when you should be asking the most questions because that's when like you have the latitude of being the new guy. Like ask questions. Most good organizations will encourage this, right? Like organizations that know that the first, like this is a big company, the first 90 days is gonna be a lot. They encourage you to ask, ask questions. So ask questions in your Teams channel, or your Slack channel, whatever you use, ask questions in, in meetings, like ask questions. Just keep asking questions. You don't wanna be that guy that's clueless, right? And doesn't know what to do and is not reaching out for help. Ask as many questions as possible. Ask, 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 ask. The next thing you want to do is make sure when you ask a question, make sure that you kind of note that for next time and also start helping other people. Now, this 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 has to be done the right way in the sense that when you're new, you probably might have other people who are new like you as well, like people that join at the same time that you join the company. So if you join maybe like a couple of weeks earlier than somebody and you have knowledge that someone doesn't have and they ask a question, just try to jump in and help, you know, offer the resources that you have or the knowledge that you just gained. It just, you know, helps the camaraderie and just like people like, oh, like, okay, like this guy's willing to help. Like, it's not like, you know, uh, it's not in a way to like kind of like try to like be fake or anything. It's just more so like, 
it just helps with like people knowing that oh like okay like this guy is you know actually trying to be helpful to the team so help other people if you can especially if you're new when you're new it's easier to help other new people because like you have more recent knowledge than people who have been at the company for quite a while so ask questions and help people final tip is to no final tip next tip is to start documenting what you're doing right and as and in the same breath start looking for like oh this doesn't seem right how can i help now this one is where you have to be careful like don't be that guy who's like you join a company especially if you're not like senior level you just join a company and like trying to like tell them to do things differently no do not do that like you're new here so first try to figure out how things work here and then start looking for opportunities for improvements some things you can find real opportunities for improvements like really quickly like oh i noticed this about this um is this right and sometimes the reason for that is because some of the you know the SOPs or whatever might not, might not have been updated in a while because nobody has onboarded in a while. So this is your opportunity to help to improve the onboarding process. Like oh like uh, I think this could be better. Uh, could we change this? Because you're a new guy, right? So you can really help influence that. And that's a really great thing to start with. On the same breath, I said that you want to start documenting everything you're doing, right? If you make a change to something, you document that. If you helped improve this process, you document that. All of those things that you're doing are going to go into like your growth, your promotion, performance, all of those things, which typically happen like every six months or every you know year or whatever the case is, whatever company you work at. So you want to keep a running list of those things you're working on to make sure that you don't lose track of them. And then when your manager is talking with you about, hey, like, you know, growth, promotion, whatever, or you want to talk to your manager about that, you have all of those things in the list. You have them documented. I talk about this in my brag sheet video. I don't think I've made a video about having a brag sheet, but probably might make one. It, it's super helpful. It helps your manager help you get promoted essentially like especially if you're doing work like really impactful work you want to keep that documented and that really helps your manager like oh dang okay day has been doing this for the last almost two years now or the last six months i think we need to like but you know create this doc and you know make a case to get him promoted it just helps him so much managers love that <laughs> I, I i know that my managers like my previous manager loved it my current manager loves it it's amazing, right? It just helps you keep a track of everything you're doing. And I've, I've been doing this since Datadog. I do it now on Amazon. Keep a running list of everything you're working on. Document it, like links to things you did, you know, all those things, super important. So start finding ways to improve things and also keep a running list of things that you're working on. But yeah, and you know, honestly, try to, it, it, your first 90 days is you drink it from a fire hose. There's no way to, there's no good way to do that but just figure out a way to like kind of handle it, right? Um, I try to like limit my responsibilities. Maybe if I have like, maybe like, for example, like if when I first joined a company, like my first 90 days, I might not do as much content, right? I might not maybe go out as much. I might just keep things to a minimum, right? So that I can focus more on like getting up to speed on work, right? So that's my main focus at that point in time. And I, I have periods of life where that's important. So yeah. I think that is more than enough advice for how to, you know, succeed in your first 90 days in any cybersecurity role. Um, how to be productive, you know, I would say like that is subjective. I have different opinions and thoughts about productivity. I might make a different video about that, but I think if you want to succeed in your first 90 days, every single thing I've listed so far is going to help you. Like even throughout and past your 90 days, right? Thanks for watching. If you want to see the video where I talked about my transition into cybersecurity from Datadog to Amazon, then check out this video on the right of the screen. If you want to see the video where I talked about my transition from analyst to engineer, from Optiv to Datadog, check out the video on the left of the screen over here. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.